My name is Ruth Icon. I'm working for the German Geo magazine as their director of photography since 1994. Until 2009, German Geo had a correspondence office in New York where I worked from 1988 to 1994 as their photo editor. New York then was for me the center of culture, art and of photography. I don't know where the center of photography is these days. It's nowhere and everywhere. It's in the cloud, it's in the photo community, it's out there, everybody takes pictures. It's wonderful. So there's no real center of culture of photography anymore. The magazine is not only the Green Monthly magazine. We put out 11 different magazines within the GEO family. Three children magazines, a history magazine, science, travel, just to name some of them. There are like 18 photo editors in total including the photo editor of the international issue. The Green and Monthly Geo comes out in about 17 countries. So there's an enormous amount of photographs we need every month. And we want to print the best, and we want to work with the best photographers. For the Green and Monthly issue, it is mostly photojournalism or documentary, but we have a lot of other stories on psychology and philosophy, etc., and science and technology, where we can use art photography. And we also have in each issue, we have an animal or a nature story. We are constantly looking for new styles and new voices in photography. We look at what is published. We look at all kinds of competitions. We go to photo festivals. And not to forget, of course, a lot of photographers come to Hamburg to visit us and to show us their portfolio. I don't know a photographer the best is he convinces me with a story. I know it is a risk because if a freelance photographer produces a story, it costs money and maybe it's rejected. There is a risk involved, but this is the best ticket to enter the market. Every picture should be great. I mean, at least a couple of pictures should be outstanding. So you can see if the photographer is able to tell a story in images. But it also happens that photographers come in with a portfolio of all kinds of single images. And if it's very convincing, he or she can work for us. It's not easy to photograph movement because all kinds of techniques like blurs, panning, freezing motion, etc., they are very familiar to all photographers and even to most of the viewers of the images. And the trick, in my opinion, is to express something without putting the technique into the foreground and show the magical side of a movement or a situation. Just to name some people who are important in the development of movement in photography is Jacques-Henri Latigue, uh, Muybridge and Harriet Edgerton, and of course Ernst Haas, who created a new vision for color photography using blurs. Of the over 2,000 images I looked at, a lot of the images showed dance and body movement, of course, but also nature, animal behavior, and obviously in sports photography, it's always present. Many photographers had very different and very creative ideas. Now I want to talk about my five favorite images and my overall favorite image. You see two young women walking in the snow. It doesn't really fulfill most of the criteria I just mentioned. It almost looks amateurish, and still I picked it. I think it has a wonderful lightness to it. You can feel that these women enjoy the work. It speaks to me for several reasons. It reminds me of an image I saw, a fashion shot by a German fashion photographer. Her name is Sibylle Bergemann. She died last year. She was a photographer I admire a lot. And I'm saying this just to mention that 
When you look at a photograph, you carry around with you your particular culture and your particular experience that influences the way you see things. And this picture just went to my heart. The next image is actually totally different from the first one, and it is a representation of a complete chaotic situation where everybody involved is absorbed in finding a way out. The colors, the form, the combination of man and machine is so intriguing and invigorating. The next picture I picked is like an impressionist's painting. It uses color and design to show the joy and adventure of serving the waves. The abstraction shows in a masterly way the possibilities of photography to be totally liberated and free to express nothing but sensation. This picture is actually the opposite of the long exposure image we just saw. This is a freeze frame image brought to perfection. The free runner who is jumping over the wall caught at the most perfect place, the only light spot between the branches and the tree and the vegetated wall. A stunning picture, in my opinion, that leaves the viewer undecided if one should admire the sportsman more than the photographer or vice versa. Now we come to my favorite photograph. My background is photojournalism, so I had to opt for this one. This image shows a situation during a demonstration of young Palestinians near Ramallah in the West Bank after Israeli soldiers shot tear gas at them. It is very intriguing because it has an almost romantic look. It is a beautiful landscape setting and a sunny blue sky. The smoke indicates a dangerous attack, but then in a way it looks unusual because it cannot be a bombing attack. There is no explosion, but only smoke. So it's very tricky to find out what's going on. The form of the trees, the smoke, the falling tear gas, and the people in, on the ground running into all kinds of directions make the viewer curious to find out what's going on. And that curiosity is the best reason to print an image in a newspaper with an explanatory caption, of course.